Hi and welcome back to a boat called Wonder. So thanks so much for all your uh, comments and thumbs up for my last video. I I'm just really flattered that I've still got people watching me after you know four years and uh, I recognize lots of people that have been there from the start um, you know watching the video straight away as soon as it's released and giving me some really good feedback so yeah thank you so much again I'm, I'm just so flattered by that. So right let's get back into it. Uh, fuel tank part three I think. Hopefully I'll finish it this time, or is it part four? Can't remember. Now let's take a look at some of the fittings that I've bought to manage the uh, fuel pickup lines, etc. This is the uh, Vetus fuel tank kit that I just bought, which is a really nice little unit. It's got the 38mm intake here for the, the fuel entry, and it's got space here for three different uh, connectors. It's got this plate here, uh, which is just a blank plate at the moment, but I can take this out and in its place put in this uh, fuel sender. So this is not a Vetus brand, this is a different uh, brand. It's 850 millimeters long, which hopefully will pretty much go to the bottom of my tank. Um, but my understanding is that these are all compatible, so that should go into there. Uh, and with, with this kit, you get um, these compression couplings, which are really nice. And the only thing I don't like about this kit is you only get one of these. So there's basically one for the fuel pickup line, there's one for the fuel return, and then there's one as a fuel vent, which isn't quite enough for me because I want the fuel pickup line, I want the fuel polishing pickup line, I possibly want a diesel heater pickup line, plus the vent, etc. So in the end, I bought two of these. One has got an 8mm line for the Yanmar pickup and the other one will be a 10mm for the fuel polishing um, unit that I want to set up. The way they work is also quite nice. All you need to do is cut a 114mm hole here. Uh, there's a rubber gasket here and there's a second part here that's got three screws that will go through and clamp these together. And I think you tighten this up and this compresses it and then this rubber will bulge and as it bulges out it'll seal against that hole and also uh, pull the top down to to sit nice and flush. Um, so the first thing to do is to take this seal out. It gives you a second one here for deeper thicknesses. This is for a thickness of 4 to 10 millimeters and the one that's here is 1.5 five to four millimeters, which won't be enough because of course the lid for that fuel tank is seven millimeters. So let's see if we can get this one out like that and put the thick one in. And then this piece will line up here and it will go in like that. Right, so now I need to position these up and then cut some holes in the top of that lid. Time to install these fittings now. I've just made this template here so that I can try and work out the position. Now I need to make sure that I get that fuel pickup line as close to the front of the tank as possible. And this tank is going to be uh, ha have the, the back end elevated so everything flows down uh, to the collection point right at the front. So I need to get that right. But then the other thing I need to be mindful of is that um, I don't want this butting right up against the lid here so probably could have done with having this opening a little further aft. I'll probably end up with maybe eight mils space here which should be okay. The problem is if I move it too far forward that fuel pickup line is going to be hitting against the front of the tank because of course the, the lid is kind of like that. Alternatively I might be able to kink or bend that fuel pickup line so it comes back a little bit. Before I go any further it's time to set up the tank and take it down to Wanda now and uh, do a dry fit, see how it fits in. So I'm going to uh, get up early tomorrow and do that. Well it's been a while since we've had a look at Wanda. It's been a while since I've been down here but uh, here she is. Still looking beautiful with her shiny white top sides. Um, so I'm just getting the scaffold and I'm going to undo this side so I can get up, get the fuel tank in. Uh, sit it down here and just check some of the positioning and measurements. I 
just wanted to check before I finish this tank and seal the lid down that it was going to fit in here okay and that there was going to be enough clearance between the bottom of the engine uh, and this because obviously I've built up a little bit more height than the original tank using these nuts and then right at the end I want to have a return pipe for the fuel polishing and that will probably stand up about 30 mils so I just want to make sure it wasn't going to be uh, knocking up against the bottom of the engine so yeah I've just put the mounts back in and according to the Yamaha spec that's kind of the bottom of that set square there is where the sump will be so and I can check it at the front as well yeah so that's that's where it's going to come down to so something like this so plenty of room no no worries whatsoever plenty of clearance there so that's good now the next part is to check the angle of these fillers and the line is going to come from here down here under here through here and then something like that so of course that's not the right size pipe as i mentioned before i want to set up a fuel polishing unit for this tank so that i um, draw it from the front there send it through the fuel polisher and then um, send it back here and i want to have a pipe that goes down inside that's, that's sort of bent to push back this way so it really um, creates some turbulence there in the in the fuel and, and pushes everything forward so that it tries to you know it can mix up and try and suck out any diesel bug so I want to make a return that comes back in here so now I've got a spare blanking uh, plate because I took this off that Vitas fuel kit and put in the fuel sender and I've also got a spare gasket now because of that fuel center so that's quite sweet um, this was the the piece left over from the hole saw that I cut through so what I'm thinking is I can build up something like this and then I've got a compression coupling here so if I can mount this into here um, and set that up that way put the pipe down then that's my return yeah so that's what I'm going to work on now So now, the next part is to put this all together and I've done as much cleaning as I can to make sure that there's not a speck of dust in there and it's ready to accept fuel and I'm going to bed this down now on the top there 
I think I'll take this lid off so I've got some room to get in there. Right, so I've blocked this up here so it's level because I don't want the lid sort of moving. Because I think I'll just sit it here, I don't think I'll really need to clamp it down or anything. I just want to get the right oops, mounting, I don't want it running everywhere. Right, a little bit more pressure I think. Squeeze a bit more out. Right, so that's um, stuck down. Now, it's not quite as light as it was before. I think it's probably about 12, 15 kilograms. Not bad still. Okay, what I need to do now, along this join here between the G10 and the uh, polyester layup that I made I'm going to wrap a bit of epoxy tape around here and epoxy it down and that'll be the end of that so I just need to do a bit of sanding now to um, sand down a, a chamfer on this surface to make it nice and round and then put the tape on so I'm not going to record the sanding I'll come back in an hour or so right so I'm just putting some tape along the edge I got the belt sander out on the end to level up the edge and then put a bevel on it and that uh, seems to have worked well now I'm just trying to get this tape on Right, let's take a look at this. Okay, that's worked out really well. That is good. Um, snow bubbles, it's really tightly wrapped around this lip. Um, I've probably got a bit too much resin here. I can, yeah, probably sand that back a little bit. Um, yeah, but that's really good. Really pleased with that. So I'll just check that this is still good and not going over any thick resin buildup. Right, so I'll end the update at this point. The question to ask is, have I finished with my fuel tank? Pretty close, but not yet. I think there's going to be one more fuel tank, maybe fuel tank part four, because I need to now look at how I'm going to fasten this into the keel. Before I can do that, I need to go back to Wonder and laminate the inside of the keel because that's probably going to add another one or two millimeters uh, thickness back inside there. So I need to uh, get that right, laminate the inside of the keel so that the keel or the bilge is done. Then I can fit the fuel tank in there and look at how I'm going to fasten some fixings there and that's going to be the end of the fuel tank. And also, I'm waiting for some components to arrive so I can set up the fuel polishing system and just test that out. So hopefully I'll be able to show that to you next time. So thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully I'll see you again before Christmas. Bye for now.